So it has been an exciting and amazing day at IIC Bangalore and now I am at Professor Dipankar Nandi's lab and we are going to go and meet him and find out uh, what kind of research he is doing we are also going to show you the lab and let's find out how a day in IIC looks like for a scientist come professor let's go in So now we are inside the lab you can see the lab is fully equipped with lot of instruments reagents chemicals and what not and lot of humming noise because lot of instruments are running so without wasting much of our time let's go in and talk to professor dipankar nandi Hello sir how are you good good how are you good afternoon good please sir please sir so we have uh, professor nandi with us and we are going we are right inside his chamber in his laboratory so let's talk about him and his career sir you had a incredible career th- so far and now that you are doing research and i see and also training students teaching students how has been your career so far um it's been amazing uh, so i started off here in 1997 Uh, and i've been here you know all these years more than 25 years uh, and uh, we've been doing many mul- many different kinds of things so it keeps me uh, keeps me busy um, right. and it's also good to have students because it makes you feel that you're young right. uh, and it's good to, to spend time with young folks <laughs> of course <laughs> so sir before we get started with our interaction you've been working in iic for several years if you could throw some light on your uh, career at iic bangalore in research right um so my laboratory works on microbes uh, as well as host responses um so with regard to microbes we study um uh, uh, in e coli um a certain phenomena known as phenotypic antibiotic resistance which means um, as long as some compounds are there uh, the organisms are antibiotic resistant so unlike genotypic uh you know or genetic um so this is as long as the compound is there there's antibiotic resistance the moment you remove the compound it reverts back it loses its uh, resistance so right. we stumbled across it and we've been following uh, through on this we've identified different compounds different commonly used uh, medications as well as uh, um uh, compounds present in the environment which uh, which which do this right. um we've been using this also as a model to screen for ways by which uh, we can study antibiotic resistance and that is something really uh, interesting uh, the other uh, organism that we work with is salmonella typhimurium we use it as an intracellular pathogen as a model to identify novel genes that are uh, involved uh, in stress responses um in you know biofilm formation uh, in many other um, aspects we also use salmonella typhimurium as a infection model uh, to study uh, molecules uh, uh, that are important in host defense and so on right. um with regard to host defense we have again two model systems one is um uh, the t cell activation model where we try and identify molecules which are important uh uh for or or which are important in inhibiting uh, t cell activation and then we use that uh, in an in vivo model so we have both in vitro as well as in vivo models and one of which i mentioned was the infection model yeah. the other one is uh, an inflammatory cytokine um that we uh, that we work with is interferon gamma and that uh, produces nitric oxide and nitric oxide uh, relates you know uh, is important for many Uh, responses so we study uh, those also and uh, overall you know we our lab works on multiple aspects so it uh, never uh, bores us there's always something new, new. Hap- happening yeah that's yeah. how science is right and no also uh, well apart from that it's important for survival uh, if you work with multiple things um, you don't get bored then there's always something that's interesting something is working out right if you're True. just working on one thing i feel um, you can be a bit cornered Uh, and in india i think uh, it's important to be a bit flexible sure. um, so that you know you uh, at at some point some project or the other uh, is reaping good harvest right so sir if you could throw some light on your overall career path uh, from starting till today so that students can feel motivated and inspired to pursue it in their career and research um yeah i'm i'm glad that you asked me that question um 
So I did my BSc in microbiology from the University of Bombay. Um, and after that, I did my MSc uh, in the MS University of Baroda. Uh, and post the, my MSc, I went abroad uh, to do my PhD. Um, and I did my PhD with Professor Jim Allison, um, and who won the Nobel Prize yes. in 2018 uh, for the development of checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, I must say that uh, I was there in the lab when the initial results were coming, um, but we had no idea of, you know, what it would lead to. I mean, science in that sense is really unpredictable and also wonderful. Uh, and checkpoint inhibitors are used now routinely uh, to help save lives of uh, cancer patients. True. Um, uh, post uh, my, my PhD, I went, uh, did a postdoctoral uh, research with uh, Professor John Monaco, uh, at the University of Cincinnati, uh, where I worked uh, um, on the other side of T cells, which is on the antigen presenting uh, cell part. Um, so, um, so my training was um, was really good in the sense I worked on the T cell bit uh, and the antigen presenting uh, uh, cell bit. So when I came back uh, to Bangalore, I decided that I would make use uh, of both these aspects, and I'm so glad that uh, I've been able to train students on both aspects, which is on the APC part, as well as on the T-cell part, and also, you know, uh, transfer this sort of knowledge to students over here. Uh, to me, that uh, is of great satisfaction. Wonderful. That's that's really insightful. So you started your career uh, in Bombay, went to Baroda, and then uh, went abroad. Uh, yeah. Berkeley, came yeah. back. You worked uh, with a Nobel laureate. And then you came back here and now you are educating students, pursuing your research career. It's definitely a very motivating and inspirational journey for our students and subscribers at Biotechnic. So, um, like you said, there are students who are working under you uh, and you're guiding them for PhD. So, what is the criteria you look for if you are absorbing someone in your lab for PhD? Okay. Um, so, um, in, in our system, uh, I do not get to choose a, a, a student. Okay. Um, so the way it works is it depends on the ranking of the student in the interview okay. uh, and the student's preference. Right. Uh, so if a student stands number one in the interview, um, you know, it's likely that the student will get uh, the person uh, of uh, his, his or choice. her or her choice. Um, but um, if a person is, uh, is somewhat below, uh, then there's a, you know, uh, and there are other people who have, uh, who have scored higher. Uh, and I've chosen uh, the faculty, exactly. then you, you know, the, the student will get that. Um, so um, in my case, I've had a wide spectrum of, uh, of students, right, from, you know, peeps, students who have done well, who have not done well, even right. students who have not chosen me, but they have, you know, they have, uh, they have landed up and we have both worked together and they have got their PhDs and done very well. Um, so uh, it's been a learning experience. I, I believe uh, in teaching, uh, you know, uh, uh, the teacher is also a learner. learner. So, so both of us have, have learned uh, uh, and, and we have done. So, yeah, but what I try and look for is uh, students who have a drive, who are willing to learn. Uh, and I think that's the most important criteria, the willingness to, uh, to learn and to be open. Of course, you need to, uh, you know, hard work plays a very important role. Uh, and, uh, uh, but overall, I think as long as they are willing, open, uh, and, you know, it, it, it works out fine. Um, remember, PhD is like running a marathon. Sure. Uh, it's about five to six years. Um, and to be able to sustain such a long journey, uh, you need to do well in the lab, but you also need to, impo uh, you know, to enjoy the process. Uh, so if you don't enjoy the process, I don't think you will be able to sustain such a long uh, journey. And in, in, in biology, uh, often after PhD, you need to do a postdoctoral research. So there is, you know, further screening at different uh, stages. Uh, so for all this, uh, I think uh, you need to be good, but you also need to enjoy the process. Uh, you need to really like what you're doing. Wonderful and well put. So uh, now coming to, uh, because our audience is, of course, students and biotech professionals, and they would love to meet you. And I'm told that you are organizing an Immunocon conference and uh, meeting in October. So if you could throw some light on that so that our audience can come and join that as well. Yes, so um, Immunocons are, um, are, are, is an annual event uh, that uh, is um, held on uh, by the Indian Immunology Society. So this society was established about um, uh, 50 years back, more than 50 years back, 
uh, um, and uh, this meeting in October will be the 51st meeting. Uh, we are particularly happy uh, about this meeting uh, because the last meeting that was held in IASC was uh, in January 1993. So right. it's been a long gap. Um, so we are really happy that uh, we could, uh, um, uh, we were given the opportunity to hold this meeting. Um, so um, for this meeting, we have uh, speakers from uh, abroad, from the US, UK, Austria, Australia. Uh, we have uh, speakers from India, all over India, right from Kashmir to Trivandrum, from Pune to Shillong, from Bhopal, you know, everywhere. So uh, um, we are really excited about it. I'm just hoping that a lot of students will register and attend this event because it's a great uh, opportunity for them. Uh, to be able to do so and to have such a conglomeration of uh, of uh, internationally renowned speakers um, and uh, national level speakers uh, i think will be a great experience in addition to uh, to speakers we are also reaching out to companies uh, and to ensure that they participate uh, both in terms of stalls uh, as well as uh, speaking assignments so they have an opportunity um, to tell us about uh, you know what they're doing uh, we also have a panel discussion on, on uh, academia, on interactions or influence of immunology in academia, uh, as well as industry. So overall, I think it will be a great experience. And of course, coming to IISC, uh, experiencing uh, the environment in IISC itself will be uh, you know, an excellent opportunity for students. Right. So it's going to be a four days of excellent engagement where students and biotech professionals, everybody will learn. Yes. And then uh, they'll be exposed to all the life science uh, Stalwarts, right, right. Followed by that, I'm yeah. told that there will be a flow cytometry workshop. Yes, yes. So, um, so the uh, main meeting is from 17th to October 20th, um, and uh, before that, uh, we have a series of uh, other events too. On 16th October, we have a flow cytometry workshop, which will be held uh, in the Department of uh, Biochemistry. Uh, I urge students to take a look at the poster uh, as well as the website uh, for further details. Uh, and on 14th and 15th October, there is a continuing medical education program, which will be held in NIMHATS. Uh, right. So, and uh, uh, again, um, uh, please contact uh, Dr. Uh, Shripat Patil, uh, who is in charge of that. Uh, and the details are there in the website as well as on the poster. So guys, there you have it. You just heard from Professor Nandi and... He has reiterated that if you want to feel IAC, if you want to come and work at IAC, then Immunocon is the beginning. You must register for Immunocon Conference. The link is given in the description. Quickly register, come experience the essence of IAC, the research which is going on here. Interact with the stalwarts of the industry and do not miss out because this is once in a lifetime experience. All the best.